The PS3 is a great console to own and to mod even today in 2024, but the hard drive inside these can be a little limiting. So let me show you how to upgrade the hard drive and keep all of your game save data. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I recently bought myself a second-hand PS3. Now this is a great console uh, and I'm planning to mod this to give me full access to all of the games available for that. Now the problem with this one is that it comes with a built-in 120 gigabyte hard drive, which while that was fine back in the day, especially if I'm going to be using this um, as a hack system, that is going to become very limiting in space as I add games that's very quickly going to get full. So I want to upgrade that then and also keep any of my game save data um, that I currently have in the system. Now one of the great things about the PS3 is not only is it very easy to hack, but it also allows you to use just standard laptop two and a half inch hard drives, either mechanical drives like this or um, SSDs. And, and these will fit directly in here and just need a bit of setting up. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. We're going to open this up, we're going to get the old hard drive out, we're going to back that up, and then we're going to replace that with a one terabyte drive and then reinstall all of the system software. So let me show you how that's done. So the PS3 uses a standard two and a half inch laptop style hard drive, and that's mounted in a caddy inside the console case. So um, you can use either mechanical drives such as I have here. So I'm going to swap mine out for this one terabyte mechanical laptop drive, but you can use SSD drives as well. Now the SSD will give you slightly better performance in loading times, um, but to be honest, um, I either will do perfectly well. So if you have bought this new or second hand, it should come pre-cleaned uh, and there is no need to format it. The, the PS3 will do that for you. If you have been using it previously for something like a Raspberry Pi or Linux machine, um, there may be a number of partitions on there. So my advice would be to go through and clean all that off before you put it into your PS3. So before we swap out our old hard drive, we do have the opportunity to back up some of our data. So this backup will, will get most of our stuff, so all of our game saves, some of our downloadable content, all of that we can back up then and reinstall onto our new hard drive. There are some bits of content, some copyrighted content that you may have downloaded from the um, PlayStation Network that won't get copied across, but you can always reinstall that. So let's jump on to our PS3. Uh, first of all, we need to check how much um, data we have to back up. So if we go across to our system settings, and then go down to near the bottom, we have our system information. You can see in there that we have our free space listed. So I have a 111 gigabytes on my hard drive with 92 free. So I've got 20 gigabytes or so of data stored on that hard drive. So obviously, if I'm going to back that up, I'm going to need a backup USB drive that's large enough to hold that data. So I've got a 32 gigabyte USB drive here that I'm going to be using. Now this needs to be formatted as FAT32 so that the PS3 can actually um, use it. So I'm going to use a tool here, a bit of software called Mini Tool Partition Wizard, and I'm using the free version of that. Uh, again, I'll put download links to that in the description. Uh, but this is, for me, this is a very handy tool. Um, I tend to use my SD cards and USB drives for things like Raspberry Pis and various Android boxes and so on. So they tend to have a number of partitions on those after those processes. So this tool really just lets me completely clean the disk and get it ready for some new task. So I have down here, um, my disk number four here is my USB drive. So I can come in here, I can just make sure that I can delete all the partitions on that. I then want to, in my unallocated space, I can come in here and I can create and I can create a partition, so I don't need to give it any label. It's going to be a primary partition. It's going to be FAT32. Um, I'm just going to leave the cluster size as default and OK that. 
So you can see here that this the way this tool works is I can line up a number of operations and then when I'm happy that I'm actually performing it on the correct uh, drive, obviously make sure that you are accessing your USB drive and not your Windows drive. I can then just apply that and it will run through all those operations for me. So once that's complete, I can now take this drive and plug it into my PS3. So back on our console, we want to go into our system settings again. And inside there, you will find an option for backup utility. And if we select that, you now have a few options. So of course, we want to actually back up our data. And again, it's just asking us if we do want to go through and back up this profile. And of course, yes, we do. And then it's asking us about um, backing it up on different media. And yes, we want to do that. OK, so it's now saying that it does recognize that I have that 30 gigabyte um, USB drive plugged in. So I'm going to select that and that should then start the backup process. Now, this can take a while to run through, uh, so do just leave that running until it completes. But once that process has finished, we just need to put that USB drive to one side until we finish swapping out the actual hard drive. So let's actually change over that hard drive unit then. So as I said, um, there are different models of PS3. So I'm going to show you the full process on my PS3 Slim. Uh, but really the only difference between the different models is that the hard drive unit itself is located in a different area on the console. So I'll show you those on the other models after I finish this one. So on my PS3 Slim, if I turn it up this way and show you the front of it, there is a hard drive cover just here. So to get that off, I need to flip the unit onto its back and then I need to open up this little tab here and underneath there you'll find the little um, securing screw which holds everything in place when so you just need to remove that. So once that's removed, um, that little hard drive cover, this little plastic cover here, should just now slide out and lift off. You can now see that we have a little handle, so if I flip that up, that should let me just pull out the existing hard drive, and that should just come out like that. As you can see, it's enclosed in this little drive caddy, and that is just then another just standard two and a half inch drive. So to actually swap that out of the caddy then, if I flip it over on its back here, you'll see that there are um, four securing screws on that. So all I need to do now is to undo those screws and then just remove the existing hard drive. Now, of course, before you take it out, do make sure you check which way around the hard drive is installed in the caddy unit, because, of course, we're going to have to make sure that our new one slots into exactly the same position. So that should just then fit into your caddy and just push it into place. And then, of course, we just need to put back in those four securing screws. And then, of course, we just simply to get back our console and slide this drive caddy back into position. Again, make sure you get that um, little sticky out tab in the right place. I should just slide back in there, fold in the handle and then replace the cover and replace the final securing bolt. And that then should be your hard drive all swapped out. So for the other models then, um, let's first look at the fat um, units. So at the end of the fat unit, you'll see a hard drive cover. So that plastic um, cover just needs to be prized out. And behind that, you'll then find a securing bolt holding in the drive caddy, and then you can get to the drive itself. On the super slim model, one end of the console actually comes off. And again, inside there, you'll find a securing bolt holding in the hard drive caddy. So either of those, as I say, once you've got the cover off and the securing bolt undone, the process is exactly the same. So now that we've got our brand new blank hard drive installed, we're going to have to reinitialize our system and reinstall our system software. So we need to download that from the PlayStation.com website uh, and do make sure that that's where you download from. So you can either search for PS3 system software update in Google and you should get that coming up as the number one result or, or just follow the link. I'll put the link to this in the um, description of the video.
So at the time when I made this, um, we were at version 4.91. That may be higher than that when you come to reinstall yours. And if we scroll down on this page, you can see there's various situations where we would need to install this manually. And we, of course, are reinstalling our system software after reinitializing our system. So there's some instructions we can expand out here. So basically, we need to download this file. So you can see it's saying here that we just need to right click on that um, and then click Save Link As. And that will then download this ps 3 updatepup file. So if I click Save for that. Now, you may find that your browser is not sure what a .pup file is. Um, so you may need to tell it that you actually do want to keep that file um, and, and save it onto your computer. Uh, but once you've got that downloaded, we then need to go and create an FAT32 formatted USB drive. And we're going to copy that um, file into a particular folder structure. So, so let's go off and do that next. So I've formatted a second uh, USB drive here. And as you can see, that, that's an FAT32 drive. And, and my one here, it's only a four gigabyte drive. It doesn't need to be that big for this particular um, operation. If you did make a backup drive a bit earlier on, then you can, of course, use that. And you'll find that part of the folder structure we're just about to create will already be on there for you. So as if we look back at the instructions then for what we need to do, we need to create a folder within a folder. So we need to create a root folder called PS3, then a folder called update inside that. And they need to be all capitals. And that's where our file will then go. So we come back across here. So I'm going to create a new folder and that's going to be PS3. Then if I go inside that folder, another new folder, and that is going to be called update. And then if I go inside that one, and then the file that we downloaded, this PS3 update.pup, that needs to be copied then across into that update folder. So once that's complete, we need to jump on to our console. Now, before we actually power on the console, we need to have our game controller plugged in using its USB cable and then having our update USB drive plugged in as well. So we need both of those connected before we power on. So the first message that you'll see will just confirm that you need to have your controller connected via USB. So just press your PlayStation button just to confirm that. Next, you'll see a message asking you to connect your USB drive and then press the start and select button together. So once you've done this, your PS3 will scan this USB drive to see if it can find that update file. If all's gone well, you'll see a message asking you to hold down the start and select buttons before it actually starts to format your new hard drive. So hold those down for about five seconds and you should see it then going off and starting that formatting process. Now, this is going to take a few minutes to complete, so just leave that running and we'll come back in a second when it's finished. Your PS3 will now restart and begin the system software installation. So first off, it's going to check to make sure that the software is valid. And you'll then see a message confirming the version number and asking you to press the PlayStation button. So this will take you to the terms page where you can use the up and down on your D-pad to read through them and then use the right button to go through to the accepts menu. So just accept the terms and the installation process will start. Again, this is going to take a few minutes to complete. So let's just let that run through. So once that's complete, uh, your system will restart and we're effectively back to a brand new PS3. So we're going to have to go through the full initial setup process, uh, adding your account, setting up your Wi-Fi and so on. So just go through the whole of that. And once that's complete, you should then be back into a completely fresh PS3. So just to confirm that everything's been set up correctly, we can go across to our settings and system settings and then down to our system information. And we should find that we now have our one terabyte drive sitting in there ready for use. So if you did make a backup earlier on, you can plug in your backup USB drive, go to the backup utility and select the restore option. So again, this is going to now get all that information off your USB flash drive and put that back onto your new console. 
So once that process runs through, it'll ask you which um, backup data you want to use. Then you can select to restore that. And that will then, of course, go through and copy all that data back onto your system. Now, this process will probably take the same amount of time as it took to create your backup. So just let it run through. So once that's complete, just press the X button to restart the system. And that should then reboot with your backed up user fully restored. Now, I have to admit, when I ran this process through, I did end up with a rather confusing message here talking about user one when I had backed up my Bob account. But um, everything seems to have worked correctly. This may have been because I recreated the Bob account when I um, initialized the system after my um, disk change. So maybe there's something to do with that sort of clash in user accounts. But if you actually go through and log in as the Bob account, um, I will you will find in here then that all of my game save data has all been restored and I can continue playing something like my Gran Turismo game here um, from exactly where I left off on the old hard drive. So that should be your PS3 all updated now with a large hard drive. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, um, I'm going to be taking this um, on as a project where I'm going to hack that, which will allow me then to use a whole range of homebrew applications and then, of course, install and, and run um, PS3 games from their backup files. And again, all of those will be stored on that internal hard drive, which is why I need the sort of one terabyte, just so I can get a, a good few games on there. So I hope you have found this video useful and that you get some more life out of your PS3 system. Please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel, especially if you want to follow on and see how to hack this PS3. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.